really a heat transfer involving liquids. If you supply heat to a liquid at a constant rate, the temperature is going to rise at a constant rate until you reach the boiling point. At the boiling point, the temperature remains constant until all of the liquid is boiled away. Here's an example of temperature versus time for water. Here we have the liquid phase as the liquid is heated up to the boiling point. At the boiling point, the liquid is converted to vapor, but notice the temperature does not change at the boiling point. However, once all of the liquid is gone and all we have is vapor, the vapor will continue to increase in temperature at that point. The amount of heat required to convert liquid to the vapor state is called the heat of vaporization. And for water, that's 540 calories per gram. So let's look at a problem involving heat transfer for a liquid. I want to convert water at 10 degrees to steam at 100. First thing I need to do is heat up the water, which is Q equals MC delta T. Back to thermochemistry. Mass 180. C is the specific heat of water, one calorie per gram. Delta T, I want to go from 10 degrees up to 100, so the change is 90 degrees Celsius. So to heat up the water, it's going to take 16,200 calories. Then we're going to change the state because when we get to 100 degrees, we're still a liquid. I want steam at 100, so Q equals M delta H of vaporization. We'll change the state. 180 is the mass. Delta H of vaporization for water is 540 calories per gram. So to change the state will require 97,200 calories. So total energy required 113,400 calories for this process. Now we're going to look at the four types of intermolecular forces of attraction. First one is dipole forces. These act between polar covalent molecules. Anytime you have two different nonmetals bonded together, it will be a polar molecule. For example, SO2. Because of the differences in electronegativity, oxygen is slightly negative and sulfur becomes slightly positive. Oxygen hogs the electron density. Well, if another molecule of SO2 comes along, there will be an attraction between the oxygen and the sulfur because the oxygen is slightly negative and the sulfur is slightly positive. These are called dipole-dipole attractions. A dipole is nothing more than the slightly negative and slightly positive due to differences in electronegativity. When something is boiled or evaporated, it is these forces that are broken, not the covalent bond. We're breaking the intermolecular forces, these dipole forces, when we boil or evaporate a substance. Hydrogen bonding is a special type of dipole interaction. It's a stronger type of dipole interaction. It only occurs between these groups of atoms, HF, OH, or NH. For example, water, because of differences in electronegativity, oxygen is slightly negative, hydrogen is slightly positive. So if I have another molecule of water, there will be an attraction between the oxygen of one molecule and the hydrogen of another molecule. And these are very strong intermolecular attractions. So when I boil water, it is these intermolecular attractions that are broken. Here's a graph of boiling point versus period. I'm going to look specifically at group 6A. So group 6A, oxygen, sulfur, selenium. H2O molecules have hydrogen bonding interacting between them, strong type of intermolecular force. H2S has dipole. Notice the difference in boiling point. Water boils at 100, H2S boils about negative 50 or so. And that's because hydrogen bonds are very strong intermolecular attractions. They're hard to break. Dipole 
while strong, are weaker than hydrogen. So dipole are easier to break than hydrogen bonds. Third type of intermolecular force, dispersion. Dispersion result from the attraction of the nucleus for the electron cloud of another atom. So dispersion forces occur between every atom and compound. Here's what happens. In an atom, you have the nucleus at the core, and you have electrons outside in the electron cloud. The nucleus of one atom attracts the electron of another atom, and that's a dispersion force. These are very weak, and they occur between everything. These are very easy to break. And then the fourth type, which I know is not on your notes, ion dipole forces occur between an ion and a polar molecule. For example, SO2, drawn before, oxygen is slightly negative, sulfur slightly positive. That's a dipole, and then K plus is an ion. Well, the positive K plus is attracted to the slightly negative oxygen, and that's an ion dipole force. So as far as the strengths of forces, hydrogen bonds are the strongest. They're the hardest to break. Dipoles are kind of in the middle. Dispersion, very weak forces. They occur between everything. Very easy to break dispersion forces. So we've looked at the liquid state. Now let's look at the solid state. When you cool a liquid, the kinetic energy of the particles decrease, and the attractive forces become more and more dominant. Finally, we reach a point where the liquid becomes a solid. The freezing point is the temperature at which the rate of freezing of the liquid is the same as the rate of melting of its solid. And so the freezing and melting are exactly opposite processes that occur in equilibrium. The amount of heat required to convert a specific amount of solid to the liquid state is called the heat of fusion. And for water, this is 79.8 calories per gram. So let's look at a problem where we're converting ice to liquid water at 25 degrees Celsius. We're already at the freezing point. So we need to change state. So we need to melt the ice first. Change state is Q equals M delta H. In this case, it's delta H of fusion. Mass, delta H of fusion for water is 79.8 calories per gram. So we're at zero, but we need to change the state to the liquid state, and that's going to require 39,900 calories. Then we're going to warm the liquid up, which is Q equals MC delta T. Mass, specific heat of water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. And delta T, we want to go up to 25 degrees from zero. So the change is 25 degrees Celsius. That will require 12,500 calories. And so the entire process will require 52,400 calories of energy. Phase diagrams show the equilibrium pressure temperature relationships between the different phases of a substance. Here's the phase diagram for water. It shows at different temperatures and pressures what the state of water will be. Over here, we're in the solid state. Anything with these pressure temperature coordinates would be the liquid state. And then here we have the gas state over here. So if we move from 760 from left to right, here we're in the solid state. Once we get from 0 to 100, we're in the liquid state at 760. Once we get above 100 degrees Celsius, we will be the gas state or a vapor. There's one point, point A, which is called the triple point. 
where all three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, can coexist in equilibrium. So here's an explanation of what all the lines mean, but as long as you know how to read a phase diagram, if I give you a pressure and a temperature, you should be able to tell me what state of matter we're in, whether that's solid, liquid, or gas.